G'day, Bomber Farrell here from Groot Island Northern Territory. Today, I'm gonna to go over a few of the things about sailfish and how we rig up for them and get a few things on the boat set up for just fishing around Groot Island for switch baiting, pitch baiting. A lot of people do ask about what you gotta to do to sort of set up and we'll just go through a whole heap of things which we've learned over the years uh, that have worked for us. Um, and you can sort of take it or leave it whichever way you wanna go and hopefully out of this video you can learn something that'll uh, help you somewhere along the lines with your bill fishing. What we'll do is we'll start with the bait. Like, so once we're out there on the grounds, we simply use a little bait jigging rod, what I call my little bait jigging rod. It's just a little bait caster on a, about a six and a half foot rod and just like little tiny bait jigs, as you can see there. And I usually have heaps, packets and packets of these with me on the boat because if there are mackerel around, you want to just change them out as you're going and you just put a sinker on the bottom there's a snap swivel there. So you can just put a sinker on, clip that on and hit the bottom. We're jigging up for bait in about 18 to 20 meters of water and using a four ounce snapper lead. At the top of the bait jigging rod here, little tip is I've got another snap swivel so I can easily take the bait jig, jig off like that. So for traveling or if you want to unravel it or if you lose it, you can easily clip one on and I use a little rubber bead there at the top because with other people on the boat and I have about three or four of these rigged up when we go down because that's the most important part of the day is actually getting some good bait is as people jig up on the side of the boat, as you can imagine, they wind up and that will just hit the end of the rod tip and rather than the swivel come straight in, as they bring the bait jig up, it hits the end and then it's just a matter of lifting the rod up and the sinker is at this same height, so you can swing that around and undo all the baits, chuck them into the live tank or into a bucket, and you haven't got this swivel running all the way down the rod or destroying the end runner. And that's when you bait jigging rod. So other ones that I do use are just little egg beaters as well, like this here. Just something small like that there. That's only like a, a 4,000 size reel, 3,000, 4,000. 20, 10 pound braid, doesn't matter. Short little rod, again, simple rig at the top. Just clip a bait jig on, drop it in. The kids love it, it's, it's good fun at the best of times anyway, and that's sort of the start of the day. So, the bait that we're catching, while we speak of bait, looks something like this. These are some frozen ones from last year. And then that's the little sardine, and what I'd call a little pilchard. And they're the bait balls that the fish are eating. They're only small, as you can see, they're absolutely tiny, but these guys gorge flat out on these things and they absolutely love them. So once we've been fishing for the day and the, whatever's dead at the end of the day with the bait, I usually just keep it and then just put it in the freezer and either keep it for insurance bait for next time when we go down, or else we can just use it if we go out fishing, bottom fishing through the rest of the season. Now rigging these guys up, I've already, well this one already had a lucker band because we would have used him late last year. Size 16 lucker bands. Get a swag of those guys. Just go down and see Sandy at the news agent or grab them from wherever you're gonna get them around. And all you've got to do is I use like a little live bait needle there. So you can see the little hook on the end here. So the lucker band just sits in the end of that. Now if that was a live, I'd either have Grab the sardine like that in your hand and then you poke that. I just literally poke that through. I'll then pop the lacquer band on and then just pop straight back through. Then I just loop that like that onto the fish. Once it's in that situation and that's all good, that's all that's how we rig the bait. That's rigged up, ready to go to switch, to switch bait, a fish out the back of the boat, or if you see a free swimmer to cast at it or on a bait ball, if you're driving up and you're on the bow of the boat, hanging onto the bait to cast in, that's literally all we're doing. There is one other little thing you can do and that's put a little skirt over the top of the bait. If you've got a little bit bigger bait, so there are some bigger pilchards or little trevallies that you might get down while you're jigging, because these are small baits, you can rig this little guy straight over the top of the bait. You can do it, I find it better for the marlin. Um, sometimes when the marlin, they just sometimes like it to bloop up. And then you can just simply go like that, pull that through, and that sits in. 
And if that bait was a little bit bigger, you could imagine that just sits nicely like that. And I might do that with one bait, just one bait alone, and that sort of pops on top, gives it a little bit of color. And, um, and it does work, I think that works pretty well. Once you've got the bait rigged up like that, and we'll do other videos through the year as we actually rig it up and put them into the live bait tank, because I try to do it as quick as I can if we're trying to keep the bait alive, or I might even get someone else to hold the bait and quickly rig it up and put it through, is put your fingers in the lucker band like this, and you just a bit of practice and then you'll get really quick at this, because you literally just go like that, spin that around, and then you loop that on. So I literally nearly need to do that in slow-mo, but put the, your fingers in like so, roll it around like that, and then when you pull that down, you've just created a loop, which then clinches down onto the circle hook. Once you've clinched it down with the rubber band, I don't mind just getting it and just giving a little extra little push like that, and that usually tightens it up. If you really want, you can quickly do a half hitch around just for an insurance purpose so the bait does not fall off in the bucket or fall out off the hook when you're actually putting the bait out the back. So that's good to go. That's what the baits look like. They're not very big. I know it's sort of, some people are a bit surprised and shocked at how small the baits are that we use, but that's really what the sailfish are eating. They will go for a bigger fish if you're running a teaser, so it doesn't necessarily mean that the teasers that you're running need to necessarily be that small. Before we get into the teaser side of it, and that ends up being a bit complicated, so at this stage of the game, <clears throat> we would have a bait rigged up on a hook. But let's talk about the rod and reel combo that we're using. <clears throat> and this is all we're using. So there's that circle hook, so you can imagine the bait on that. Just, this is 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. Use 80, 100 pound, even 60 pound fluorocarbon leader is what I use. And I just tie directly onto the hook there with a uni knot. So uni knot straight down to that. And that's good to go. Make sure you've got a sharp hook. Hooks I use, uh, 7.0 owner hooks. Those guys there. Uh, inline, so just make sure you use the inline. Don't have them offset because then when the, if you use an offset hook, it can get caught in the guts basically on the way up. If it's in line, it should come up and then just roll around on the corner of the mouth when the fish goes to take the hook. So you can see that it's in line there and it's not, not offset at all. So use about a three to four meter leader. So on the boat, that will be rigged up. This, this rod here is seven foot. It's quite a heavy rod. So if you have a look, like that's, it's got a fair bit of grunt in it. Um, and I mean, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's, um, 40 to 80 pound rod, and that's got a 10,000 Saragossa. You find that most people around here will use 10,000 size reel. Um, it's, it's good for everything, not only using it when you're bill fishing, but you can use it if you're bottom fishing, uh, even if you went trolling, if you wanted to have, rather than going and buying heaps of separate gear, just use something around that size there. They're indestructible. Um, you can use a Stella, you can use a Biomaster, um, you can use any reel around that size there, so you can hold about 300 meters plus of 30 or 50 pound braid. That's all we're using. We're not using mono. Um, you can, by all means, use 15 kilo mono. Uh, I've just found that by casting this stuff out, it doesn't twist up as badly. And we just tie our leader on to the braid there. And I've been using an FG knot for the last years now, just something like that there. Just have an FG knot straight down onto the braid. No dramas at all. You can use an all bright, um, we don't even use, I don't, don't even use a double on that anymore, but you can by all means use a double. You can use wind on leaders, all that stuff works. But the main thing is like, you can have a look at that rod and reel combo. We've caught marlin up to 200 pound, 300 pound on rods, just like that there. You do have to drive away from them a little bit to get them up. But most of the sailfish come in on that. Uh, not a worry at all. We are only fishing in 20 to 30 meters of water though. So um, that's the rod and reel combo that we're basically using to catch the fish. When we go to the teasers, now this is where it all gets a little bit, everyone has different opinions and different ideas on things and there are so many things out there that you can use. I'll basically always run a daisy chain and for me on the boat, I always run the daisy chain on the left-hand side as I look towards the back of the vessel. On the left-hand side, I'll run the daisy chain. I'll have the two outriggers and on the right-hand side, 
I've been running a little dredge. I'll run the dredge when we're really searching and really looking hard for the fish, especially at the start of the season. And once you find that you're right on top of them and you're in the area where you're pretty confident we're gonna get fish up, sometimes that dredge doesn't get any run time because when things happen on the boat, it happens really quick. And with sailfish, if they pot up, if there's only three or four people on the boat, you don't wanna be pulling in a mountain of gear onto the boat when you're trying to catch two or three fish that are at the back of the boat. So we need to be onto the daisy chain and the two outriggers potentially just to bring those in while we're dealing with one or two fish rather than having daisy chains, witch doctors and teasers, shotguns and all sorts of stuff out. And there's two people on the boat and six sailfish turn up and that can end up with a zero because the thing is we've got so much gear out the back tangles and around the prop. Let's have a look at the daisy chain. I'm gonna run around the other side and we'll have a look at how a daisy chain is set up. There's all sorts of different daisy chains. You can start, if I start down the end here, I use this little, what's called a Williamson's dredge mackerel. It was just a soft plastic. I've got another one just here that isn't rigged up. What I found over the years with these guys is just using a bit of wax thread, stitch that guy up all the way through to the toe point. And then I literally run about 200 pound mono. I just tie it directly down onto that. So that just pivots out the back. You can use whatever you want out the back, a big soft plastic. You can even rig up little queen fish, um, belly flap mackerels and um, tuna belly flaps and then put a pusher over the front of it. I run mono at the end because I, most of the time the billfish will come up from behind and whack it and I think that has less chance of spooking it. As we go down the daisy chain, I've got different things all the way through. There's little squids. This one here will have to get changed out. And through the year, there's some operational stuff that happens as you go. And this guy got stitched up just to get through the season. And there's another one there that hasn't had any issues at all. Little tip if you do go to make a daisy chain up, you can make it in one big long run and then spread it all out evenly. Now this is, I'll put the tape measure out just so it's 7.2 meters from the back to the bird. It doesn't have to be 7.2, it can be six, it can be eight, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how long the actual daisy chain is from the bird. I've got clips here that run between the end of the daisy chain to the first drop point where the first squid is. And then there's another one here and another one here. So if this were to get destroyed badly by a mackerel or a barracuda, they're not really good friends of mine. I can unclip that, either grab another bit I've already got rigged up here, ready to go and use those clips to unclip it like so and just basically take that one out and clip this one in and replace that straight away alternatively i could just unclip this other one that's here for instance if that one was the one that wasn't right i could literally just get that pop that off and i always have a heap of other ones that i carry with me snip that off put it through and we're good to go back in the game and it does happen, so that's why I do take lots of extra spare stuff with us when we do go down bill fishing, because it's not uncommon to have mackerel or barracuda just come through, because there are a lot of fish around in that environment, and they will just destroy and shred your gear. So if we walk all the way along here, these little flashes that come through here, that's what a brand new one looks like. These guys have had a bit of a tough life. That one there can get snipped off, and it'd be a matter of just cutting that wire right there, slide that guy off, slide the new one on and do redo the crimp, lose about 50 mil of cable and re-crimp that on. Go all the way through, these aren't too bad. Then we get up to the bird. Birds usually got pretty good toe points on them, um, but always check them because they do fall apart. Then I use this little pull cord. It's really tough and durable, I find. Now that pull cord this is seven meters and it comes back up another three meters that's 10 meters long so from the back of the boat that is tied onto the cleat at the back and it's 10 meters to the bird and then another seven meters for the daisy chain just so you have an idea of how far it is out the back of the boat so that there will get tied onto the back of the boat really important to secure that properly so you don't lose your whole entire rig when it's out the back of the boat one other little thing that I've made over the years that works really well, which I call the mini rigger. And this is the mini rigger. It's simply just an aluminium pole and it's got a little slots in the bottom just to go into the bottom of the rod holder. 
and just get a bit of pipe, bend it up. You could do it out of stainless if you wanted to. Drill a hole in the end there. And these outrigger clips are what's in there. So I would literally have this here, the end of the daisy chain tied onto the tied off on the boat, typically with a bowline. Then this here goes out and clips. Now it's under a lot of pressure because the thing is this here, you could imagine is running out of the back of the boat. So if you picture the back of the boat and that's in the rod holder, this is tied off to the cleat on the side of the boat. Then this here is running out the back. Now the daisy chain is then running out the back of the boat, exactly where we want it, but it's now two foot outside of the wash line that's out the back of the boat. So what that does, it does two things. One, it keeps it in the clean water which is ideal for us so that we've got a better visual on the fish behind it. But with this clip, I can tell you now from experience, when that just goes, that noise is heard on the boat and everyone, if they're looking around, daydreaming, asleep, not paying attention on the binoculars, whatever, bang, Johnny on the spot, that is the alarm clock going off so we know there's a fish at the back of the boat and we're ready because we haven't haven't been paying attention if we're not at the back of the boat, Johnny on the spot. So really, I think that's a red hot little tip to go with is a little mini rig up. You could even have it smaller, whatever, but just having that little thunk off the back because I used to years and years ago, tie it straight onto the back of the boat before I started with the mini rigger and too many times, um, you'd sort of be driving around, there might only be two of us on the boat, you'd drive around and you'd sort of be looking back going, oh, that doesn't seem right and you'd bring it in and Lo and behold, there's nothing on the back of the daisy chain. We've probably missed a shot at a fish and you've missed that opportunity after making all that effort. You can see a whole array of different daisy chains. I thought I'd just run out different things. You can see these guys here have got flashes made on the side that have got monofilament. There's a big pusher on the end of this one. That's how this, this guy comes through. And that the pusher doesn't actually go through the center. So this one here waves and rolls through the water and goes all over the place. Um, they all work, all of these teasers work. This is a really old one uh, from a few years ago. They do start to corrode pretty badly, so I will sub them out after a couple of years and send them to teaser retirement, I suppose you could say. Um, we've got spreader bars. This is an old spreader bar, and I mean, everyone who's been bill fishing, honestly, if you haven't gone and bought and tried anything and everything, under the sun because every year you're sort of trying to think of the next thing what's going to work what's not going to work and as you go through all of that stuff spreader bars and they do work don't get me wrong these guys work and they create a whole heap of interest on the surface this is just one type where they use these hard plastic um, reflecting garfish all the way through um, you can also take all of those off and run with the little squids and just run a little a spreader bar that's the same as that but just imagine that with a couple of little squids the same, just spaced out evenly every couple of foot. And use, if you are gonna use a spreader bar, I found on the outside, use little squids, and then use the bigger ones in the middle and keep the, the weight in the center. And then on the outside, use shorter ones so that it doesn't roll and spin as much. The other one, which we'll go over, I'll just, we'll go down and have a quick look at this big guy down the end, is the dredge. Now, dredges, have come into vogue in a big way and they do work. Like everyone uses them all the big game boat. Now this is a flash, I have to admit, dredge and I think it works a treat. It isn't easy and it depends on the crew on the boat, especially on a smaller trailer boat. But this here is a 10 pound weight and as you can see, that's like pretty heavy. Now, if you're on a big game boat and you've got winches and stuff, awesome. But on a little trailer boat with people who are sort of novice, maybe not ideal and it is quite cumbersome on the boat, I have to admit, and I'll show you something in a sec, but that is a big, uh, expensive dredge. You don't, it's not the be all and end all, and there are some smaller and cheaper options that we do use. I use it sometimes at the start of the year to, when I'm down there having a really good look around because you're trying to throw everything at it because that does look unreal in the water. But if we do have to move pretty quickly, we've got to back the boat off, lift this up, and then it's a bit of an effort to get, it's a fair effort actually getting it in to then get going again. But I'll show you another little dredge down here that we run and it's this guy here now this little dredge here has a little fish on the front this is only a three pound weight so that's actually quite light so while we are still in gear um, this can actually be retrieved so that's actually quite light that comes up 
This has got a really good pulley on the end of it. Again, this is um, a little apparatus that just recently made for the side of the boat. And this here just mounts in the side of the, the gunnel on midships so that it's right out of the way. So that when the dredge comes up, if you're on the boat, you'd be pulling it up like that, like so. So if, you were, if I was standing in the boat, I could then just lash this off like so. Now, having it like that there, we can then just boot it. If we've got to boot it, we'll just boot it and that there is out of the water and doesn't touch anything, doesn't affect anything. And that's basically how the dredge would work. If we're going to travel a fair distance, we just pull that out and lay it on the deck of the boat. So that's the dredge basically done. The other one which we have are the outriggers, and I'll just duck around here. Oh, I've got a fair bit going on trying to cram all this information in. This is one of the outriggers. This is I use a taco um, outriggers mainly because um, they're collapsible. We do long distances on group. We're traveling an hour and a half to two hours one way to get to the billfish grounds. So we can pack these up and we don't have to have them bouncing out in the outrigger. So they'll just collapse down quite comfortably. Before I collapse that down, the outriggers have a little bungee. Recommend, make sure you get a good bungee with a good clip on the end of that to clip onto the boat. You don't have to go and put a special cleat on, you can just tie a little bit of rope to a part of the boat to get the right length. So that's nice and tight. When you put that on, you want it to be quite tight so that the outrigger does not keep retracting in throughout the day and you have to keep resetting the outrigger. Again, it's got the little clip, same as what's on the mini rigger, which I just showed you earlier, and you clip that in and that then gets sent out once you put the line in and then you go to deploy. And we'll go over more of that later in the season when it's not so windy. That's why we're going over all this bill fishing gear now so people can get themselves geared up and ready to go for later in the season. Outriggers are really good handy things because it gets it out nice and clear. So when you do turn the boat into different ways, you can actually keep that lure out into clean water the whole time. So you're not having everything riding close into the work, uh, dirty wash water in the back of the spread. Two outriggers, typically what I run. I literally use a little stumpy glass rod like this, and this is a TLD 25. You can use a TLD 20, you can use a TLD 15, a charter special, anything like that. That's all the different reels I've used over the years, and they do cop a lot of abuse because they're just a little winch. Electric reels would be really handy. Um, I haven't got that one over the line just yet. But you sort of just run something like that. This is a 130 pound Dacron. So I use a 130 pound Dacron. Similar to the bait jigging rod, I run a little stopper at the end because when this happens and someone's got to rip the outriggers in on the teasers, they'll just wind it straight in all the way and they'll just rip it off, crack it off the rigger, wind it in, and this will end up smash into the end of the rod tip. So that little stopper there is just protection because at the end is a big clip. So that clip is on the end there like yay and then i just run a teaser on the end of that this one here has a dark um, pusher eight inch it's a soft headed soft headed pusher and run those there is a series of different colored pushers that you can use oyster is whatever you would like to use as you can see Hopefully in that video, I've just gone through a lot of information, pause it, stop it, send messages, um, all the other jazz. This will, I'll just post it up on the, to the YouTube page. Hopefully that's something that can help you out and we'll get back to you later in the season with some more info. Thanks for watching.